Welcome to today's episode, the podcast where we discuss the most recent installments of a different series every show. Apple TV Plus and Bill Lawrence have teamed up for a new comedy based on Carl Hyacinth's 2013 novel, Bad Monkey. Like so many other 2024 series, this is a detective story. The first two episodes, which dropped August 14th, follow Andrew Yancey, a Floridian, played by Vince Vaughn, as he investigates the mystery behind a severed human arm, which is fished out of the Atlantic Ocean. Name as many Bill Lawrence TV shows as you can. Okay, Shrinking? Yep. Scrubs? Mm -hmm. uh, Cougar Town? Yeah. Uh, this? <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's like one that he did in, I think, 2012, 2013 that he was part of. Leroy. Was he part of... Um, the uh, Drew Carey show at all? I know his wife was. I don't think so. In other I... words, I know Bill Lawrence's career. Oh, Ted Lasso. Ted Lasso, yes. yes. And also he did Spin City, Clone High. It really depends on if he's the creator or developer. But out of all the TV series he's ever done, he's a huge fan of Carl Heisen, and he's always wanted to do a TV series based off of one of his books. And he that makes said... sense because he's a very dra dramedy dramedy oriented oriented fellow and so is carl heisen the reason books. he actually says because heisen's books often feel uh, often uh feature a lot of surreal characters and satire parallel to scrubs he feels like so okay. when he heard that bad monkey by warner brothers back in i think 2021 was going to be made he jumped on that opportunity he had lunch with carl heisen and he was really trying to make this series because he's always wanted to adapt one of carl heisen's books well it's interesting because uh the main character Yancey is kind of the anti-Ted Lasso. Yes, he's still a protagonist, but unlike Ted Lasso, he is cynical, he's self-destructive, he's flippant, he's basically a douchebag. And it's really, really good casting that they got Vince Vaughn to play him because he's able to bring a charm to that type of character. I read Even the though first, he's yeah. a cheater, he's uh, abrasive to other people, he tortures his neighbor slash real estate agent, he has little respect for the law, he's still a rootable guy. And that's the difference between in our last podcast when I went after Taser so much for being this gang leader who was supposed to have like a heart of gold but clearly just didn't sell that. Over the course of six episodes, Vince Vaughn, you just have to watch him and you kind of fall in love with his character. Well, I mean, I think that's just the case with Vince Vaughn in general. He brings a Vince vaughn to the role. Should we and just after, name this podcast the Vince Vaughn like fan club? After or reading the first three chapters of this book, I agree with you. I think that Vince Vaughn was a good character to get. Or do do you think actor. after reading the first three tra chapters of the book and having seen the first two episodes that Yancey is the same Yancey from the book. Yeah, it follows it very closely, even down to the mango popsicles that he's sucking I'm on. I'm not surprised. Down to uh, even the doctor having a sniper and SWAT about, as their husband. How about the narration, though? Because the narration isn't actually from Yancey. It's from the guy on the boat who Yancey knows, but it's got like that shameless style snark to it. Even yeah. in the previously, in the second episode, he's kind of insulting the viewer as he's explaining what happened in the first episode and what we should have been paying attention to. That was one of the differences also the book is about 317 pages and this is 10 episodes so there's about five or six extra chapters as bill lawrence said when he was talking to carl heisen that he decided to add on to this story and i don't want to cut off just at the narrator or at vince vaughn i think that the cast as a whole is a lot of fun because you've got christopher who's played by rob delaney mm -hmm. who i know mostly with that mustache from the deadpool series where he plays again an altered, like completely <laughs> polar version to what we're seeing here, where he's not the villain. He's just a really, really good guy in Deadpool. Peter in Deadpool, he was the narrator of Sexy people. Beast. He, yeah. <laughs> he's shooting people in the first episode. Then you have Eve, played by Meredith Hagner. Portia from Search Party, one of my favorite shows that we've ever talked about that's actually what bill lawrence saw her from and when he saw search party he was like i want to make a role for her and he put her and he cast her in this yeah and she's perfect in it also playing a, an evil character alex moffitt who i haven't seen except for snl but i think he does a really funny job for as the real estate agent who's like constantly having to deal with all the shit that yancey is 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 uh putting on him via the bees or the dead raccoon in the house. He was also on the bear. Yeah, he was. He was also in the bear for season two. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Um, Yeah. So that's the real. And then the monkey, of course, the, the thing that the show is based off of bad monkey. They actually got a real monkey for the show. You can tell. And I remember in why the last man ampersand was the monkey in that and they CGI would it. And I told you at the time it was because monkeys even though they're trainable they're notoriously like difficult to work with over a long t period of time and so have you seen the monkeys imdb page no it's one of my biggest mm -hmm. pros for the show and i think you should look it up before we even continue they dressed it in a suit 
Yeah, they put him in a little tiny monkey I know. suit. Yeah. I... It's why isn't that suit in the show? That would make for such a great yeah. No, oh, it's I mean... also the monkey from Community. I remember when we were doing Why the Last Man, you said that they were trying to get the monkey from Friends, I think, to be it, and they just I think weren't I talked about to. the monkey from Friends, but I'm not sure if they actually got the same one or they, they thought they were about trying it. to, but uh, then they, I don't think they were able to. Okay, yeah. Um, so uh, enough of that. It's got great casting. It's a good story. It feels like it's being translated while well. you've got Bill Lawrence, a talented director, and it's got this interesting mystery going along with it. In Florida Man, that Netflix series, which I think got a season two, the the mystery, the uh, the deaths going on, they seem forced. It seemed like they were trying to make jokes about things based on like very little source material. This feels smart, smartly crafted. It starts funny. They're in the Keys. You've got this rich guy who's fishing for the first time, and he pulls out a severed arm from the ocean. It seems like it's going to be an Angie Tribeca uh, level comedy, um, and I think that helps with just elementing or acclimating us to um, the tone better. Like this is not a dark, dark show, even though um, you will have elements of murder and stuff being discussed. And so you suspend your reality, right? off the bat um you, you understand the hatred for the real estate agent you you uh you realize that like normal in normal day life there wouldn't be black yukons nearly killing someone and, and having them jump through windows and then the next scene them being basically fine and just continuing about their day like nothing happened um you wouldn't have a pathologist in a different county teaming up with an ex-detective to try to solve a murder like all this stuff they can get away with because of how funny it is. And well, so, yeah, and so I'm just along for the ride as I begin this journey. Like you said, it takes place in Florida. That's where Carl Heisen, Bases that's where like a lot of his books. books. Yeah, all off of Florida. And they shot in Florida. It's no surprise. They're in Miami. Um, that's where it was filmed. Yeah. And, uh, does it remind you of Roadhouse at all? Because obviously you don't have the same sort of... Um, punching going on <laughs> but... roadhouse roadhouse was way too wacky even though i know we've been saying that this show isn't really based in any type of reality i think roadhouse i think the villain was a little bit more cartoonish yes in conor mcgregor yes and i think that uh but uh, hmm, I, I i think that um jake gyllenhaal is a more serious character than yancey is though so yeah it's, yeah, yeah. I would it's double-edged sword um it also shows that Apple doesn't really give a fuck about episode title length because the two episodes here, the first one's called The Floating Human Body Parts Capital of America, which is a line said in the show. And the second one is A Hundred Bucks Says You Won't, which is um, when Yancey takes the job as a restaurant uh, purveyor, like he, he goes in and checks to make sure things are up to code. Yeah, and that's straight. The guy tries to uh, to to bribe Yancey into letting him go, even though there are like cockroaches around and and really gross. There's a condom in the soup and stuff. Yeah, like that. that's straight from chapter four. In fact, that second title, just a hundred bucks says you won't, is is ripped straight from the the words. It's interesting though, because remember in Lady in the Lake, one of the titles was "Innocence Leaves When You Discover Cruelty First in Others, Then in Yourself." Yeah. That is a mouthful. So it's like Apple just doesn't get like it's easy. I like how in South Korean shows, it's usually just episode one, episode two, episode three, episode four. But no, here we need full direct quotes. Um, yeah. So we've got the mystery of Nick Stripling. He's the one who had the arm yeah. <laughs> who is flicking people off because there's rigor mortis and it causes uh, him to be given the bird to everyone who picks up that arm. And his wife, Eve who is supposedly evil. She's now dating this guy named Christopher, who we think might have been the one to kill Nick. Uh, at the same time, Christopher is buying up a bunch of land and developing it in the Bahamas. So you have him sort of pu pulling double duty. And then you have this guy named Neville in the Bahamas having being displaced by this new uh, development coming in there. And, uh, and then he has to move to Florida. And I guess he's all they're all going to team up together, Yancey and Neville and the monkey and take down Christopher and Eve. But that seems too simple to be what the actual plot is going to be. So I have a lot of thoughts on just what I've seen so yeah, far. Right. OK, you want me to just go? Yeah. I thought you had some. All right. So I feel like it does a good job in the second episode because Yancey says, I don't know what I know, but people know I know something. And that's why they're trying to kill me. I feel like we as an audience fall into the same boat because we've 
clearly seen clues, but we haven't been able to put them together yet. Clearly, Nick and Eve are going to be some sort of villains, but they feel more like complicit villains than main villains. Like, I think there's so you're to, saying they're working for someone, uh, that or there's just like more mystery to be had. Um, who knows? Maybe even Nick, the guy who's dead, could have been like the main villain, and, and it, it could go anywhere at this point. I'm also concerned about Caitlin, who is Nick's daughter, the one that Eve is trying to like manipulate. Um, teenage girls don't usually have a great track record when it comes to murder mysteries. You know, they're usually the first ones in, first well, ones out. I think she's going to be okay because she's actually played by Bill Lawrence's daughter. Oh, okay. Yeah, Charlotte well, Lawrence. So this is a Judd Apatow situation. Or like I was, I would liken it to Justified or anything where it's like Timothy Oliphant's daughter was actually played by his daughter in the TV series. Yeah. That's so weird. So Caitlin is, so he has his wife starring in Shrinking. And he has his daughter starring in his other show. Talk about nepotism. Okay, so Bonnie's storyline is the other thing we haven't talked about. Uh, Yancey is having an affair with this lady who then turns out to be wanted. Not her real name isn't even Bonnie. And she had she she's alleged to have sexually assaulted a minor when she was teaching in a different state. That right. seems very odd, but there has to be a connection, right? Well, like, she's she's from the book, and and much yeah. like in the TV series, she does go by a different name. So one criticism of Carl Heisen is I know that like in real life he's like sort of notorious. He's I think he married or dating someone thirty six years younger than himself, and in his stories, his main character is usually sort of like this houseish, um, uh, confident, but like you know self defeat. Like he's he's too cocky almost and he always yeah. gets the girl right. so in this he's got bonnie on a, and then he also has this will they won't they thing with rosa happening <laughs> the coroner slash pathologist and uh and so i just kind of find that interesting well rosa but again like we said rosa's married so what? at that point no she's yeah. not yeah rosa's is it? not married she said she was lying about having a boyfriend she doesn't have a boyfriend okay well i know that in the book she was she said that she was married to the sniper and swat so okay she, but again she lies about it at the beginning and then later on he asks and she's like i lie about it so that people won't ask me out um there's the dragon queen which this is probably the weakest storyline for me because i i don't know enough about it it's a mystical plot it's it's kind of reminding me of the conjuring where there was like um a whole story section about being cursed yeah and right. so we're watching gracie uh this obia which i think is a real like religion or type of witch doctor type thing and she's going after christopher because neville who is the guy who has been displaced uh it has paid her to kind of destroy this dude's life i so, think when you talk about the surreal type of storylines that carl heisen likes to write um that's what they were doing here i think that's the most kind of fantasy as you were saying that the tv series gets i think i may have flipped it earlier so nick is the dead guy right yeah and so christopher and eve are the two evils i think at one point i, I mixed nick and christopher up but yeah so if nick is if they cash out the dead guy's life insurance right that's what Eve really wants to do. And I'm wondering if they need to do that in order to afford the land that they're buying in the Bahamas. Um, there's a lot of chips that are missing. And the, the, the nice thing is, even though the episodes are like 50 minutes long each, it still feels like you're not wasting your time. You are, you, and, and for the moments that would normally be slow scenes, they're funny. And so like it makes up for it in that way. And the only other mystery right now is who's in the Yukon because everybody's sort of accounted for. And I can't imagine... It's someone that we've seen so far. It's not going to be his partner. It's kind of going to be Yancey's lawyer. There's a guest star that's supposed to show up next episode. It could possibly be them. I won't say who it is, even though it's been reported on, but it's a very interesting casting choice. And it's also not Egg. Egg is like the muscle for Christopher, right? Yeah. And so Christopher Stripling, right? Or no, that's Nick Stripling. Okay, those two, I get mixed up so much. But yeah, so he's the muscle and he's pretty funny as well, even though we think that he killed one of Neville's like friends because he stole from the so restaurant. Everyone has, it seems like, a, a comic side to them. Would you say Vince Vaughn is your favorite character? Who would you say? Oh, favorite character is the monkey. I mean, the monkey, <laughs> the monkey hasn't just... had a chance to shine yet, but he's clearly going to be like the critical piece that causes whatever to happen. Do you think happen. he's going to be like the number two, like in Hudson and Rex? How it was? No, I don't no. think I don't think Vince Vaughn's character yet. He's going to adopt the monkey. And I don't think that Neville is going to give up the monkey. I don't think they're going to kill Neville off either. 
Well, so. can you think of any other? This is a big question I had. Can you think of any other show where it's a mystery about an arm showing up out of nowhere? Because I only got kind of half answers. 127 Hours, The Walking Dead, Evil Dead 2. That doesn't really deal with like a a uh, a limb just so showing up out of nowhere. So in the Cloverfield Paradox, there is that famous trailer where his arm just starts crawling around on its own. And clearly in like idle hands and stuff. Idle hands. Scenario, Sometimes yeah. you have evil arms but not necessarily ones that are just not that are frozen and, and, and incapable of moving. Um, I, I think the closest it came yeah. was probably a shield episode. And I have the clip right here. That's an arm. Yeah. But like that, but you it see how it's similar. Yeah. It's similar. It also reminds me that there's a lot of like shows where the dog runs up with the, like I'm pretty right. sure half of bones episodes is the dog running up with an arm in its mouth. And then yep. they just have to figure it out. It's like, get bones on the line. <laughs> but I was trying, because it seems like, I mean, and maybe it's just credit to Carl Heisen of how simple the idea is, but it seems like a story that's been done before, you know, where it's like they have to figure out. And I think in the book, it is a mystery as to who the arm belongs to. I believe that the TV show gives away that it's the who, the person. Nick Stripling. Yeah, Nick Stripling. When you're not, I don't think supposed to know that yet. Yeah, they also murder the guy who finds it rather quickly in that first episode, too. But that's part of the reason I like it is it's not one mystery. It doesn't feel convoluted, but there are a lot of storylines to keep track of. It just feels like it knows where it's going to go. It's taking its own time to get there. It's funny while you wait. Um, I guess if you're going to relate it to anything, first of all, Yancey is just trying to get his detective license back. But he keeps on getting dragged back into the crime world because like uh, or not like he's not part of the crime world, but trying to solve this murder because Caitlin asks him to help. Um, and he just has like a good heart. Ultimately, he also. Um, but that reminded me a lot of all. What was the blue show that we did recently? The Azula show. Um, oh, Los women Azulas. in blue. Yeah. Women in blue, because the main guy there was who was training them was promised to get his detective ship back if he helped do a good job. And so that's sort of what Yancey is doing. He has to lay low. He has to do a good job as a restaurant code person. And after a while, they'll just give him his his detective. Well, that was back. the that was the way it was in the book. But I found it annoying how, yeah, it was like Vince Vaughn. That almost seems to be his kryptonite in the two episodes where it's like he almost has to keep on being pulled back. Like they're telling him to get rid of the arm, just ditch it somewhere. So that's not ruled a homicide. And he doesn't yeah, get any more. But isn't trouble. that funny? Because like what the police department would actually do that? It's it's it, it reminds me a little bit of a Will Arnett show that came out many years ago called I think Flipped. Um, which also had him sort of living on the beach walk. It could have been in California, though. Um, overall, I, I would say that this is a really, really funny show. It separates itself from other mysteries. I'm excited to see where it goes. I'm going to skip through it, at least. Uh, it replaces Sunny as far as my favorite Apple oh, wow. series for okay. the summer because Sunny has really dropped off for me in the last few episodes that I've seen. I think you're going to like the guest star that shows up, and I believe they're going to be in the series for at least two episodes. And yeah, I agree with you. I think it's a funny show. It follows the book very very closely only some differences i have are novel rosa and dragon queen are Neville. expanded yeah they're expanded more in the tv series Good. um they gave away the twist and the book is more linear and focuses primarily on the mystery of the hand rather than the variety of floridian characters we're introduced to in the first two episodes the pros i would give it would be the cast one humor two um three i mean you got a guy named egg so it's like the humor compelling mystery four Driggs IMDb photo um and then <laughs> did I say I was going to give it five because I'll just stick with four for now and then the cons is every girl being into Yancey uh the mystical storyline is two because I'm not sold on it yet um and those are really my only flaws uh at the at this moment what would you give it out eight out of ten eight out of ten yeah eight out of ten it is a very solid good show you should check it out it is the first. It's got, it's got something for everyone. It's the third book to be adapted from Carl Heisen's works, but it's actually the first TV series to ever be adapted. I know that in 2018, the CW made a test pilot for one of his books called Skinny Dip that came out in 2004. But yeah, then it was an it, earlier book for him. But it wasn't picked up for television uh, when they ended up making it. It's gotten pretty good reviews. It has a 7.2 on IMDb, 91% on Ron Tomatoes, 80% audience score. And Entertainment Weekly, tell their review, they said it's Vince Vaughn as best right it's been fun rediscovering why we all liked him so much in the first place and graded the series a b plus <laughs> <laughs> all right so they agree 
Uh, is there anything else? Well, the second episode, this is actually fine to me, was ran by a husband and wife, and they wrote uh, the screenplays for Black Adam, Scoob, uh, Whiskey Cavalier, that uh, that show that came out on ABC, I think in like 2015, Rampage, Undateable, and Due Date. Wow. So, so like, they got the people who wrote movies for the second episode. Which one was your, was your favorite out of both of them, the I, first or They were one? equal to me. They were equal. both pretty funny. The the interesting thing about, like, Scoob and Date Night, those were two of them? No, Due Date. Do, or Due Date. The Robert Downey Jr., Zach Galifianakis movie? Yeah. Wow. Okay, so a lot of comedies, right? Yeah. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> uh, overall, I just think that's what all we got to say about it. Thanks for listening. We'll see you on the next episode. Hope you enjoyed this one. Bye. Bye.